We got Joe Bossard here, coach of Scott Farbel, who is the top American in the Boston Marathon today. I mean, you must be pretty happy with the performance, huh? Yeah, I, we didn't have a definition of what success would look like today, but that would be a, you know, objectively that was a good day. So we wanted to just come in and get him, get him back going again, feeling good about himself and just some confidence kind of going again since his last, his last marathon. So I think we accomplished that. and. Like I said, I haven't quite seen him yet, but I think he seems pretty excited, so yeah. as he should be. Were you able to see him on the course very often? I saw him at mile 21, which I did get a quick text that he said that was the perfect spot to, to run into him. Uh, I actually, I kind of was in a quiet area and he had just crested the hill. Um, I don't know what hill it is exactly, but he had just crested a hill. I timed him at 25 seconds back of the lead group. And he had, I think he had just run probably the fastest last 10K of the entire race at that point. Like he was moving, if you look at his splits compared to the leaders. And uh, he was over a minute behind at halfway. Um, so he was he was the fastest, you know, fastest man at that point in the race. And like, I got a chance to tell him that. And I think gave him a little confidence just cause it's a little windy section. He's not quite getting a visual of what's going on ahead of him. And I told him it looked like a couple guys were about to crack. and. I think he had a, another gear there to, to bring it home. Yeah. yeah. Well, he said he made a deliberate choice at about 8K. He realized it was getting a little too hot, and mm -hmm. he backed off. And, you know, he was a decent amount behind at halfway. You, when you're following the splits, are you like, he's running smart? Were you happy to see that? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, you knew he was in a second group, so you can't get – the group's going to do with that group. We know they're, Whatever that group does, it's like they're not really focused on the group ahead of them at that point. So as long as he wasn't falling off of that group – he was okay. Right after halfway, you'd know pretty quickly what's going to happen, what that next split looks like. And he was then at that point leading, you could tell he was pushing, leading that second chase pack, had a few seconds after the, you know, the halfway split. Um, at that point, you're like, well, he's feeling good. He's halfway done and, and he knows what he's doing. So I assumed at that point he was going to have a pretty good day. And, um, you know, it's not his first time on this course. So yeah, after halfway, it looked like he was going to have a good one. And, and then it was just a matter of when guys would start to crack or not. And, and uh, it took a while, but they did. And, and, he, and he was moving really well. What did you uh, change up in his training from what he was doing under Ben Rosario? Um, I mean, r running is a, a cumulative game. And it's, a, it's, a, it's about your life, exp you know, total experiences. And you know, a lot of credit to his past coaches, of course. I, I, I didn't take a nobody and him into someone he's done this before but it, it did seem like he needed to maybe take a different approach and simplify things a little bit get out of his head a little bit about past successes and and uh, you know we've had that with a few people on our team and and so I'm comfortable working with an athlete like that that's just looking for something a little bit new and maybe a little bit different approach and, and so we looked at what he's done and and um, we just really dumbed it down. I mean, he'll tell you, he probably cycled four workouts for the last 10 weeks over and over and over, and we felt like we had a good plan, and we wanted him going into this race a little undercooked, feeling really good and healthy, and I think he said yesterday or two days ago, this is the best he's felt going into a marathon in a long time. So we're just really careful about how hard we push him, and we want him feeling good and, and, and confident going into the, into the race. So. Um, we just really simplified the process and made it made it easy. We didn't talk about times or I, I gave him a little bit of a range I thought we were maybe shooting for but you don't really think about it on this course and We felt like he didn't miss us any training. He, he, he just kind of sailed through it and everything looked good Looks good long runs are good. The intervals are good mileage was good healthy I don't know it should go it should go okay yeah, yeah. but you were just running like the same four workouts over and over then basically yeah we keep it pretty simple yeah I'm not gonna share all of them but think, they're probably on his, they're easy. probably on his Strava but <laughs> I think he put stuff on there I'm not sure but uh, yeah no he uh, we just really simplify what we're after um, you know get the re legs ready for a, the long you know 26 miles and, and then make sure he can turn over just a little bit when was the what was the first marathon build up you coached for any of your athletes? Um, the first really good one was Laura Thweet for the Olympic Trials. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a Chicago before that, but she had only was training for about six weeks going into it because um, she was hurt. But um, I think I, I've said, and I think when we talked previously, that that build up was a little strange just because she was um, she hadn't been very healthy, so we were doing a lot of cross training. 
and really low mileage. Um, the, the, and then the first real, you know, what would look like a normal marathon buildup would have been Emma Bates before Chicago. And, um, we did a very similar, very similar for, uh, for, for Scott. We liked what we had going on with her and same principles applied. Try not to over, you know, try not to complicate it. Keep it simple and get ready to run 26 miles. So is, is this marathon coaching, is it easy? It seems like second place well, I, for Emma Bates, uh, Top America with Scott, it seems like it's I think we have really durable, good. you know, healthy athletes that, that really do know what they're doing. They're kind of built for this event. Um, yeah, I don't think I've had to take someone that's not made for it and, and make them make, make, you know, make it work, where you see that from some track athletes and that kind of thing. Um, they've already run it. We didn't have to talk a lot about how to attack this course. He knows what he's doing. You know, so those things were really simple. Just, just get him healthy. Get him, get him feeling good and, 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 and let him go. Um, he knew what he had to do. And the same with Emma Bates. She knows what she's doing. So, no, I don't think I, don't think I did anything or we did anything um, extra, you know, groundbreaking. But we, we have athletes that are built for it and, you know, just need to get them feeling good about themselves and, and, and making sure they're ready to go on, on the day. How could marathon training be too complicated? Like, what, what does that mean? Uh, I, 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 is it like I think, uh, well, how can it be too complicated? I don't know. You see a lot of stuff out there, and there are these complicated workouts. There's a lot going on. There's a, you run X, you know, you see people doing certain things at you know, long runs where they end really fast, and, and they do, like, pushes throughout, a, you know, long runs and, and five miles at marathon pace four miles and a half, like all these different type of workouts when we're really just running steady for 26 miles. Not that complicated. <laughs> so I, I, we just like to break it down like that. It's You gotta run a lot and you gotta be ready to run long. Yeah, 26 miles. So the complicated workouts, you think physically they take their toll on the athlete or mentally? I, I, I think, I, you know, American men are trying to make that jump, right? We're, we're behind, obviously. And I, it seems like something might be going on in training that's just not clicking totally. I think we have the talent to do it, to run. And maybe a lot of it, you know, Scott said before, it's like we run, we all, everyone comes and runs Boston. It's not the fastest place. Maybe if we went and ran faster courses, you'd see more 206s and at least 207s. Um, that's totally fair. Uh, but, yeah, I... I just think we should see some faster. We should see some better performances going forward, and and, and um, I think we have to remember that the marathon's a purely aerobic event, and sometimes training too hard isn't the right way to do it. Running super hard intervals and finishing really hard long runs is just may, it might not be the way to do it. Um, you just got to make sure you're aerobically very very strong, and then callous the legs. So kind of break it down like that a little bit. Yeah. Well, uh, nice job by Scott today. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. Time, Appreciate Joe. it.